Well, a warm welcome to this talk. Now, there's been a lot of reaction from you and from many others on the internet, although not on mainstream media very significantly at all, as far as I can see, about concern about these sun dimming experiments that are about to happen in the United Kingdom, we believe, sponsored by the UK government, so-called solar radiation management. Now, it turns out that the funding for this is coming from a group called Advanced Research and Invention Agency, which is part of a, a sponsored by the UK government. And I'm going to show you a bit more about that in a minute. And they actually say on the government websites that this is to basically pay for and sponsor high risk research, high risk research. And I'll be giving you the evidence for this. Now, let's look at some of these websites. So, you know, I'm not making any of this stuff up. So here is the uh, this is the REI website here. This is the Advanced Research and Invention Agency website. And you'll be pleased to hear that it's empowering scientists to reach for the edge of the possible. REI is a UK research and development fu uh, funding agency built to unlock scientific and technological breakthroughs that benefit everyone. Well, isn't it good to know that you're going to benefit by daylight robbery? Always, always good to know that we're going to benefit from having less sun, less photosynthesis, more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, less food crops produced. Always good to know that this is going to benefit us. Um, let me know if you feel patronised by the uh, statement on this website here. Now, um, here's a government website also talking about this. Um, this is the UK government and they have a separate website which we've just looked at. Now we see that um, REI, uh, Advanced, Re Advanced Research and Invention Agency, is an, is an, is a, an executive non-departmental public body. Don't really know what that means. Executive non-departmental public body, sponsored by the Department of Science, Innovation and Technology. So there you go, sponsored by the Department of for Science, Innovation and Technology. Now, I did a bit of a Google search and I wanted to know who the minister concerned was. And it turns out the minister is the Minister of State for Science, Research and Innovation and uh, Technology of the United Kingdom is Patrick J. Valance. And that's a picture of uh, Patrick Valance there. Now, you might remember that um, Patrick Valance was the science minister who stood beside Chris Whitted, the chief medical officer, and Boris Johnson, the prime minister at the time, in, in the COVID uh, lockdown era. So he was the chief scientific officer during the um, COVID lockdown era and the rollout of the vaccines. And some people think that the vaccine rollout was a rather large-scale experiment and it turns out there seems to be another large-scale experiment here 50 million pounds we believe on uh, climate modification and sun dimming as far as we know at the moment let me know how comfortable you are with all this as we go along so that's Sir uh, Patrick Valance there he seems to have changed from chief scientific officer to uh, minister of state for science and in, in the UK as far as I understand it um, the, the minister has complete authorization. He could say, no, uh, cancel this or go ahead with this. The ministers have a lot of power in the UK. Uh, now, we also notice he's not uh, elected um, because he's, uh, he's, he's got here Lord Valance. I think they might, I think he might be a baron or something. Yeah, Baron Valance of uh, Balham. It kind of rhymes, doesn't it? Um, so, uh, none elected, uh, but with considerable power and of course he used to work for uh, a large pharmaceutical company as well before going into uh, the role as chief scientific officer. Uh, let me know if that increases or reduces your level of anxiety. Here we have another site here. Now this was published in 2020 to 2024 under the Sunak government Richie Sunak, you might remember, was our Prime Minister for a period of time. Um, 
Uh, this says to continue serving on the RAI, the Advanced Research and Invention Agency Board. So former government chief scientific advisor, Sir Patrick Vallance, to continue serving on the RAI board. Um, whether he was still there or not, I've, I've never heard anything that's said um, is left. And it's good to know that he brings a wealth of experience from industry, government and academia. Uh, Ari, Ari's non-executive directors play an integral role supporting Ari. But just a minute, wasn't he the minister as well? Um, oh yeah, he was the minister as well. So it seems he's the minister and on the board. And, unless he's left for the board, I don't know. This, this could be a bit out of date, as I say. Right, another government website here. Um, research agency. Um, Supporting high-risk, high-reward research formally established. Science Minister George Freeman today announced the formal establishment of the Advanced Research and Invention Agency as an independent body. So this is, this is from the, this is a government website here. Let me show you. There you go. UK government website. Um, and of course, obviously, I'll give you all the links to these. And it, it's blatantly saying here, they support high risk research. Research agencies supporting high risk research. Well, personally, I don't want any risk taken on me, thank you very much. Now, to be fair, I think they're probably talking about financial risk, but I would consider things like, oh, I don't know, new vaccine rollouts or a climate modification experiments to be high risk. And uh, that seems to be uh, concurring with what the government says. They're actually saying high risk. OK, there you go. Um, now, um, I might show you a bit about this in a minute. Advanced Research and Invention Agency policy statement. Um, lots of interesting things here, all written in plain English. I'll highlight some. Oh, here we see the UK's coronavirus response, for, in, for instance, our uh, vaccines task force and rapid res, re, response funds have illustrated the importance of agility in funding and decision making. Hmm. OK, uh, this policy is one of many across the landscape of public science funding which will learn lessons from those... Now, you might, might not better see that, but that word there is successes. So, um, um, yeah, there you go. High-risk high risk research, advanced research and invention agency um, with, with at least one familiar name uh, involved. Now, more importantly, perhaps, here we have uh, a petition... Now, if you live in the UK, if we get to 100,000 signatures, it has to go for some form of parliamentary debate. It means probably essentially nothing, but um, it's the alternative is, is literally doing nothing for us uh, minions who have no power in these things. Uh, make all forms of geoengineering um, affecting the environment illegal. And of course, I've already signed. We've got 76,776 signatures so far. Um, that's just going up, it's going up, going up. Come on, we get to 100,000, let's go. We want all forms of geoengineering to be illegal in the United Kingdom. We do not want the use of technology to uh, intervene in the Earth's natural systems. Um, government responds to all petitions that get to 100,000 signatures or more. There you go, 100,000 signatures. This petition will be considered for debate in Parliament. Uh, and uh, created there by uh, Antoinette Taylor. Well done for that. Thank you very much. Uh, so let's, um, let's, let's get that over the line to 100,000. Um, I suspect um, in the next few hours we probably will do that. <laughs> Um, I would hope. If you're in the United States, I sense your frustration. Um, you have to live in the United Kingdom or be a United Kingdom citizen. But let's sign that and get it onto the uh, radar. So um, just just a brief review there of a few interesting, a few interesting websites. 
I'll put the links, of course, to them all so you can see them. And um, I'll leave that there for now while you go off and sign that petition. For now, thank you for watching. <laughs>